football is one of the top sports in South Florida. Every year, hundreds of student athletes go on to play for top collegiate programs across the country. But every time they play, they put their health, their brains at risk. Thousands of student athletes suffer from concussions every year, some of them life changing. This is how Daniel Brett's life changed. That kid loved football. He lived and breathed football and um, he bled green and orange for UM. If Daniel was 12 years old again and he asked me, with everything that I know now, can I play football, Mom? I would still say yes. It was seven years ago when everything would change for Daniel Brett. August 24, 2009 was the first day of high school and the first official fall practice for the Cypress Bay Lightning JV football team. Daniel was ready to suit up. Daniel's mother, Diana Brett. He practiced, he worked out, um, he knew what he had to do and he achieved his goal. He had worked all spring and summer to earn his spot on the team and it was a big achievement for a small guy. Daniel wasn't a big kid. He wasn't tall, he wasn't too strong, but he was tough and he did everything he could to make sure he could play. And his dream was even bigger than the junior varsity team. Daniel had one goal in life. He wanted to play for the University of Miami Hurricanes. Being a Hurricane had been Daniel's dream ever since he first put on a football helmet and uniform when he was just 11 years old. Now, almost five years later, he was one step closer to realizing that dream when he became the starting linebacker for Cypress Bay's JV team. He knew he was going to make it. But that's why it was that important that he showed no weakness. But sometimes we are only as strong as our greatest weakness. Daniel would come to realize this very suddenly when his first football practice at Cypress Bay became his last. Practice was in full swing when Daniel's world went dark. He was on the field not doing well and coaches of course, come on, Brett, get moving. And he finally said to the coach, I can't see. Chris Ullman was one of the coaches on the field that day. He was banged up and we pulled him out of play. Um, from there, he didn't play with us any longer. It's where he didn't want to stop. He couldn't do it anymore because of the injuries. Um, I knew practice was just about over and I left him a message. Say, if you need a ride, call me, I'll pick you up. Instead, he picked up and I said, do you need a ride? And he says, mom, you got to come in. Coach has got to talk to you. It's a call no parent wants to get. Daniel had a concussion, and it turns out the injuries had dated back for several months, hiding them from his teammates, the coaches, and his mom. And what happened was that Daniel, the entire spring, um, the entire summer when they were competing and seeing if they can be on the team, got hit quite a few times, but he never told anybody. He was that determined to make the team. Doctors later determined that Daniel had incurred several concussions in the months leading up to the start of the season, but never spoke up. Instead, he followed the silent culture most athletes are taught since childhood. Suck it up and push through the pain. When they fitted themselves for helmets, he was like grimacing. He said, what's wrong? He says, oh, the helmets are tight and that's why I have a headache. He never asked for anything. He never said he was hurt. The injuries would be enough to keep him off the football field for the rest of his life. His dreams were over. His life changed forever. I remember he came in, we were told that he had the concussion, that he wasn't able to play anymore, and we were supportive in that aspect. But after he was done, it was finished. Fall turned to winter, and football practices turned to a schedule filled with doctor's appointments. The throbbing headaches only got more intense, and the growing frustration gave way to depression. His grades took a hit, too. All of a sudden, everything that he dreamed about, all that he wanted, um, was literally taken away from him. And it was exacerbated by the fact that we went to doctors after doctors after doctors, and the headaches actually were getting worse. They were more frequent, they were debilitating. They kept on saying he has post-concussion uh, syndrome. Obvious, but there was nothing that was assisting him. Coming up after the break, hey. Nice, Daniel. Daniel's first glimmer of hope at the university of his dreams. How Diana Brett stumbles across a game-changing program at the University of Miami. We'll be back after this. All he ever wanted to do was play football for the University of Miami. Those dreams shattered when he suffered a life-changing concussion on a high school football field. 
His battle now off the gridiron and in the hospital, Daniel's recovery far from a touchdown. Months of debilitating headaches with little relief in sight. Daniel forced to resort to marijuana to help deal with the pain. That was a revelation. He's very honest about that because he says, Mom, I'm not a dope addict. I can have anything I want. He says, but they just, they help my headaches. Diana began to search for answers online and she came across an article about a teenage boy, his name not published, who suffered many concussions from sports related injuries. After struggling with crippling headaches and depression, the teen took his own life. Painful for the family, but an autopsy provided answers. Doctors diagnosing the late teen with CTE, chronic traumatic encephalopathy, a disease feared by athletes across the globe. The symptoms, if you want to call it that, are behavior that is erratic, negative behavior, cognitive issues um, that take you to making wrong decisions. It's a deterioration, it's a disease, and um, the behaviors that are surrounded by it sounded a little bit like what my son started going through. Diana kept searching for more answers and found another story, another boy, David Goldstein, who much like Daniel had suffered from multiple concussions, but David was getting better. He found relief in one place Diana hadn't looked yet. Daniel wanted to go to University of Miami and maybe these, these are the people I haven't touched base with. Dr. Jillian Hotz of the University of Miami's U Concussion Program. It's that fragile brain in a whole bunch of fluid hitting the skull. Dr. Hotz is a behavioral neuroscientist, an expert in the field of concussions. Her U Concussion Program is one of the nation's leaders in providing specialized information and treatment for concussions. Dr. Hotz realized the dire nature of Daniel's case and scheduled an appointment just days after Diana made contact. I remember Dr. Hotz later on telling me that when Daniel walked into their clinic that day, this 16-year-old who years earlier was bright, energetic, loving, and living life um, looked like an Alzheimer's patient. That day changed Daniel's life with a new diagnosis, injuries to three separate parts of his brain. Previous brain scans did not pick up on those injuries because there was no bleeding. He suffered more than a year without proper treatment. But that too changed. Daniel was swiftly placed on a strict regimen of rest. No more playing video games. He couldn't even text his friends. Try and tell that to a 16 year old who's frustrated and mad and depressed as it is. So it was not easier, but at least now we had some direction of what to do. That direction was the first step. Daniel went to therapy with Dr. Hotz once a week and very slowly the old Daniel emerged from the shadows. It was hope, the first hope I'd had in 20 months. We got him on the right medications, we got him on the right therapy, and I did see light. Daniel did come back. He was on the road to coming back, but unfortunately his emotions and the depression were very set in. His depression led to an episode of frustration at school when he had to be hospitalized. He was supposed to go back to school the next day, but the Bretts decided to give him one more day to rest. He was supposed to go fishing with some friends and um, uh, to give him a break, I guess, you know, and um, I was going to go up and get him. But she was never able to get Daniel. Diana ended up at the hospital caring for her daughter instead, who got a concussion of her own on the same day. At the time, Daniel's father and I were separated and uh, was home with my daughter. Daniel ended up staying with a friend and every parent's nightmare, there was alcohol involved and Daniel was drinking and he shouldn't have with the medications. Daniel was in Palm Beach. Diana was with her daughter more than an hour away. I didn't know it and his father didn't know it, but there was guns involved. It was like the perfect storm of everything. And in that storm, the clouds got darker. Daniel, only 16 years old, took his own life. His dreams, aspirations, all cut short. At about one o'clock in the morning, um, a phone call came in and it was um, Daniel's father. And um, apparently um, they called him from Palm Beach and told him what happened. So he had to call me. Diana's daughter, Marissa, heartbroken. A bad day becoming the worst day of her life. Brother and son lost. Dr. Hotz lost a patient on the road to what might have been a full recovery. I live with that every day. If Daniel wasn't where he was, 
um, Daniel would have still had a huge path to, to overcome where he was. Unfortunately, Daniel didn't get to an expert in concussion fast enough, that he suffered for about a year and a half with all these symptoms. And then the other thing, Daniel didn't tell anybody. So he was afraid to speak up. Up next, how Diana Brett has turned her family's darkest time into a beacon of hope for others, and what the concussion program is doing to revolutionize the way concussions are managed and prevented nationwide. We'll be back after this. Her son lost his life, but Diana Brett has not lost hope. She now uses her experience to spread concussion awareness in her own community, one 5K run at a time. I donated. $800 for my confirmation to this cause. Even tiny runners came out to tackle a big cause. I think everybody should be aware of concussions and how dangerous they can be and people should be safe when playing sports. This is Daniel's Dash 5K. It's all about raising awareness for concussions, the event now in its fifth year. It's the whole purpose of Daniel's Dash is to be able to get that awareness to parents primarily, and also to the student athletes themselves so that we don't have the stigma that stay tough, stay quiet so you can stay in the game. That stigma is so common among student athletes in particular, it's likely what led to her son Daniel's death in May of 2011. Researchers admit there's still much to be learned about concussions and how they affect the brain. Realizing it, Diana had her 16-year-old's brain donated to research at Boston University, a leading team of scientists in concussion research, immediately following his death. The police officers, they thought I was crazy. And yeah, I am crazy, I just lost my son. But I think there's more to this. Diana Brett and Dr. Jillian Hotz of the U Concussion program have become close friends. Together, they are a powerhouse for concussion awareness nationwide. Their focus, young athletes like Diana's son, Daniel. There are a lot of um, concussion-related um, media information out there, but most of it is on the NFL players. But Daniel's Dash and what we do is very specifically oriented towards student athletes. You cannot compare a 10-year-old that has a concussion from heading a soccer ball to a professional athlete that's been playing for many years. And I think that's where the conversation has to uh, really change. Dr. Hot says that changing the conversation has to start with changes to the culture surrounding injuries in sport. John Siegel, a researcher at the U Concussion program, says staying quiet about injuries in an effort to stay tough is far too common in young athletes. There are some studies that even come out to say that, you know, 50 to 75 percent of concussions may have gone unreported because these kids don't want to necessarily say they have a concussion or they just don't know enough about concussions to say, hey, I think I may have a concussion. It's very difficult to tell a high school or a college or a professional athlete that if you have a headache, make sure you tell somebody because it's not ingrained in their behavior. And so I think we've missed out on sort of the older athletes. But I think to change the culture, we have to do it at a very, very young age. We have to teach a five-year-old that it's cool to report. What's the easiest way to teach young kids these days? Technology. That's why Dr. Hotz turned to a video game to change the conversation on concussion education. We put together a video game called Sport Safe. It's an educational video game to teach little children about this, to teach them about the symptoms, that it's cool to report, that they can get back to play fast as soon as they get better. The U Concussion program had kids try out the video game to test its effectiveness. While we may not know the answer to that for another few years, one thing was very apparent. The kids did not want to put it down. 
Meanwhile, doctors with the program are also reaching high school athletes the best they can, working with the Miami-Dade school system to make sure a certified athletic trainer is at every school sporting event. Ray Crittenden, a former New England Patriot and another researcher at Concussion, explains. A certified athletic trainer is specifically trained you know, to be out there on the field at these events, you know, recognizing these things as they occur. So your trainer is a little bit unique in that they're out there on the field seeing this and, you know, they understand the dynamics of the coach-player relationship. Their message, when you take a hard hit, it's better to speak up than stay silent. But in the culture of football, you know, guys have been brought up, you know, to play in a game you know, where that's expected to happen and we need you, we're relying on you, it's your senior year, you got scouts looking at you, um, maybe play through it. So we're trying to, you know, kind of reverse that trend and let guys understand, you know, there are more opportunities for you. Um, it doesn't all culminate into, you know, one play. And that's the type of uh, message we want to send out. It's okay to say that you're hurt. You should say that you're hurt. You don't want to take um, an opportunity, a chance on what happened with Daniel. This is for our kids. This is not for the pros. This is to be able to bring awareness for concussions for student athletes, whether they're in the college or high school levels. Diana has already accomplished so much to bring awareness to concussions, but her journey to keep Daniel's memory alive is far from over. Earlier this year, she traveled with other moms to our nation's capital to lobby for national regulations preventing concussion-related injuries. She also tells us that while Daniel's dash will not continue, she is planning events like it to keep up the fight for concussion awareness. For more information on concussions and how you can get involved in the movement, log on to concussionfoundation.org. I'm Erica Orstad. Thanks for watching.